praise and giving honor unto your name, dear Father. Want to thank you, dear Father, because we know there is a table for us, O oh God. And each one of us, dear Father, as we sit around this table, we pray that, God, we are going to partake of it in the name of Jesus. O oh God, that you not leave this uh, place the same as we came in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you are sending your word to us. And as the speaker speaks to us, dear Father, we confess that we are ready to hear from you. We open up our hearts this morning. We invite you, Holy Spirit, come and take over. We bless you, we honor you. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's appreciate our mom indeed. Then we appreciate Anne. She is my wife. Amen. And the mother of our children. Before you sit down, hey, come on. Don't be far fast. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Look at me good. I said we stand. I am seeing some people sitting down. This is a year of uncommon harvest. Uncommon things. We will do uncommon ways. Lift up your hands. Say my life. My life. Will never. Will never. Ever. Be the same again. I wanted to say that you, like you mean it. And you are speaking to yourself. Amen. I'm giving you an opportunity to bless you. Bless yourself. Amen. Maybe nobody told you. But you can speak to yourself. And say my life. Will never. Ever. Be the same again. In Jesus name. Give a clap to Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we can sit down. Thank you, thank you very much. We sang a song, surely, the presence of the Lord is here. That song comes from Genesis chapter 28, verse number 16. And this is a time when Jacob was learning away, praise the Lord. He was learning away from his brother Esau. He was learning away. I don't know this morning whether you are learning away. But when we sang that song, thank you, ma'am, because uh, I felt like, yes. They already say something. Because I'm preaching about that. Amen. And, and Jacob, as he's running away, he gets to a place whereby it gets dark. And he sleeps or lasts on a rock as a pillow. You know, when you put a rock as a pillow, and you're going to sleep a whole night, I don't think you can get the sleep. And no wonder he didn't get the sleep. But instead of seeing the, getting the sleep, he saw the heaven opens, and there was a lander. And angels were coming from up, down, bringing goodies. It was a place of exchange, praise the Lord. And Jacob said, yes, surely the presence of the Lord is here. And I'm saying the same to you today, surely the presence of the Lord is here. You came this morning, doesn't matter your situation. But the presence of the Lord is here. Jehovah God is yet to sort you out. He is yet to meet with you. Because that is his business. Praise the Lord. This is a year of uncommon harvest. And we are going to do uncommon things. And you are getting uncommon harvests. Praise the Lord. I want to speak on a, on a, on a, on a, on a message of, entitled, Uncommon Harvest Calls for Uncommon Altars. And common harvest calls for uncommon altars. When I look at the Bible, the men who are blessed in the Bible, one of the common denominators among all of them is that they were altar builders. They are men who raised altars of worship to the, to the Lord. They are men who knew without God, they cannot do it. And I'm here this morning to declare the same to you today. That as we get into the year of uncommon harvest, if we purpose to worship the Lord, if we purpose to praise Him, if we purpose to build orders for Him, our lives will never be the same again. Praise the Lord. You know, we, and we read this morning, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why the Bible refers to these three men so many times is because they were altar builders. There were men who knew their God. An altar, allow me to just talk a few things about, or just give not a definition, but, but, but a few tips about an altar. 
and then you're going to move on. An altar is a place of sacrifice. Amen. And, and as we worship the Lord this morning, we are offering a sacrifice of praise to the Lord. The whole of this week, in fact, from 1st of January, we have raised an altar of prayer every day. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of dedication. It's a place of commitment. An altar is a place whereby human beings commune with their God. Praise the Lord. In other words, like I said, to Jacob, it was a place of exchange. And this morning we have come to the altar of Jehovah. That we can receive an exchange. You came. You are sand. You are down. But can you receive your exchange this morning? Because it is a place of exchange. Praise the Lord. Altars were begun by God. It is God who began the altar. The very first one is, was built by Noah. And God told Noah to build another altar. That means every other altar that you see today is a counterfeit. Praise the Lord. Because it's God who began the altars. Altar is where we sacrifice. We make sacrifice to our God. And Paul in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Paul tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that by the masses of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Do you need a living sacrifice? Holy, acceptable to God, which is your listenable service. Paul is telling us, I beseech you, brethren, by the masses of God, that we can raise an altar for God, that our body becomes a living sacrifice in that particular altar. The only trouble with the living sacrifices is because they are living. So when God leaves them in this altar, when God comes back, they have moved. Amen. They have led away because they are living sacrifices. But I pray that God can help us. That we can raise altars. We can learn to raise an altar for God. Altars were built by people everywhere. Why? It's because people wanted to connect with God. I was so excited as I was going through this. The whole of last week I was, I was studying. And I was studying about altars. Amen? And, and there are about 13 people in the Bible who did build altars. I'll mention them, but we're not going to handle them. We'll only maybe discuss three of them today. And then later on we'll see how best we can be able to handle it. But in the book of 1 Kings chapter 16 verse number 4. 2 Kings 16 4. 2 Kings. And the Bible says, and he, this is King Jotham. And he sacrificed and burnt incense on the high priest on the hills and under every green every green tree in other words he raised an altar anywhere that it means you can build an altar in your car praise the lord you can build an altar in your room you can build an altar in your office you can build an altar everywhere what i mean is don't go and build something and and you know some of us when we think about altars we think was is that something that you go and build. But I'm talking about you can build an altar of worship in your car. Praise the Lord. Instead of listening to Capital FM and the data things they talk about, you can raise a lot of worship in your car. If Jotham would build an altar anywhere, under the trees, on the hills, Anywhere and everywhere. We can learn the same. But this year, if we have to receive and come on harvest, friends, we must design and we must make a commitment that wherever we are, we raise an altar for Jehovah God. That we will worship him, we will praise him. Paul says in Acts chapter 17 verse 23, For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, Paul says, I even found an altar. With this inscription, to the unknown God. And Paul says, therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you, Jesus Christ. Paul is telling them, you have so many orders, even to an unknown God. But the same Jesus Christ, I do proclaim to you. Praise the Lord. And no wonder Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 10 tells us we have an altar. On which no priest will eat of. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. The Calvary altar. Altars 
Let me say a few things about altars. And then I will start praising. Praise the Lord. Hello. Altars can hear. Tell your neighbor, altars can hear. And they are living entities. They are living entities. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 13, verse number 3. And I will tell you about this story. But the Bible says, and he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall spread apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. Altars speak, and altars hear. But let me, hear, let me just talk about altars hearing. The story in 1 Kings chapter 13, the Bible talks about a man of God. God sent a man to King Jeroboam. Jeroboam. And the man of God comes to the altar. And he speaks to the altar. Tells the altar, altar, O oh you altar. This is what the Lord says. A son will be born in the name of Josiah. And then he continues to say that this is a sign that it will happen. The altar shall spread apart. And the ashes will pour. And the Bible records if you go on. It did happen. The altar had the man of God. Praise the Lord. So as you lead the altar of prayer. This season. I do believe the altar will hear you. And I was, I was thinking that. It, it got very, 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 very exciting and interesting. Because as he was talking. So Jeroboam the king came. And Jeroboam had what he said. And so Jeroboam raised his heart and said, arrest him. And as he did so, the heart dried up. The heart was paralyzed. He became a statue. Because he was messing with the altar. Until he asked the man of God, please intercede for me. And the Bible says, the man of God went to the altar and asked the altar. And the altar had, and the heart was restored. So even as we raise altars, friends, altars here. Tell your neighbor, altars here. Altars here. Number two, altars speak. In Revelation chapter 16, verse number 7, the Bible says, And I hand another from the altar, saying, Even so, Lord God, almighty, true and righteous, you are your judgments. Altars speak. And so that's why we stand here. And we decree and declare. Because altars here, but altars also speak. Tell your neighbor, altars speak. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, we know this and talk about to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Abel did build an altar. And the Bible is telling us today, we have a better altar. We have a better altar. We have a better brand. We have a better one that speaks better than the brand of the animals. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thirdly, altars keep record. Do you need but altars keep record? They keep record. No wonder God, because he knows it was recorded. It was recorded. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 24, God tells Moses, an altar of earth you shall make for me. And you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offering and your peace offering, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I'll come to you. Praise the Lord. Everywhere, every place where you raise an altar, the Bible, the Bible says, God says, I will record my name and I'll come to you. And what does it is it going to do? I will bless you. Praise the Lord. As you raise the altar this year, as you raise the altar this man, the Lord God will record it. And he has said, not only recording, but he has promised, I'll come and bless you. Because altars keep the record. And God said, as you raise the altar, one thing I like about God, because he has said, he'll come, and he'll not record his name. Thirdly or fourthly, just for the for three. Altars fight. Do you need but altars fight? Hallelujah. Altars fight. The altar of God cannot coexist with any other altar. 
The altar of God cannot cooperate within the altar. It has to be his altar. In 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2 and 4. I'm just introducing my message by the way. Amen. So walk with me. The Bible says, when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon. Dagon was the idol god. Dagon was their god. Then they brought the ark of the covenant. This is when the Philistines were fighting with the Israelites. And when they fought them, they defeated them. By the way, it begins very interesting, that story, if you read it. it because Israelites were pressed, the enemy was fighting them. Then they realized, let's bring the, uh, the ark of God. So they brought the ark of God. And then they shouted. Until the Philistines asked, what has happened? Then they said, they have brought their God. And because, then they said, because they have brought their God, we know, if you don't fight them now, they will make us their slaves. So they rose up, fought the Israelites, and defeated them. And they carried the ark of God. Because they knew this is the God who, is, who has made the Israelites fight every tribe. And so they took, the ark, they, they took the ark of God to their God, Dagon. Let's go back there. Then the Bible says, they brought into the house of Dagon and said by, by Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod arose in the morning, look at what happened. There was Dagon fallen on the face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Let's, let's move on. So they took Dagon and set it in the press again. And when they are lost the next morning, what happens? They are Dagon, not just falling down. The head was cut off. The heart was cut off. The torso. The only thing that remains was the torso of the God of Dagon. Why is because altars fight. Altars will fight for you. Praise the Lord. And I said in Hebrews 13.10, we have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle has no light to, serve, uh, to eat. This is the altar of Calvary. We have the Calvary altar that will fight our battles. Praise the Lord. We have the Calvary altar that will speak for us. I want to prophesy to you. The Calvary of altar will fight your battles. Praise the Lord. The, uh, the Calvary altar will speak on your behalf. The Calvary altar will hear your prayer. The Calvary altar, if I were you, I would say, yes, I will receive it in the name of Jesus because the Calvary altar will fight your enemies. God has set the Calvary altar to fight our battles. I said the first altar was built by Noah. In Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20, the Bible says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. He took of every clean animal, of every green bird and offered burnt offering on the altar. I want you to note one thing here. Altars demand a sacrifice. And that's why Noah brings a sacrifice. But look at the sacrifice that Noah brings. Every green animal, every green animal of every green bird he offered. He didn't bring a donkey. Amen. He didn't sacrifice a donkey. He didn't sacrifice the mohau. You know mohau? <laughs> Some of you are like, what is a mohau? Mohau is another bird. When you go to Kikope, there are birds that, that when you throw a bone, they just get the bone and swallow the bone. The whole of it, they have a machine, they have a machine inside. God didn't, uh, Noah didn't sacrifice that mohau, that bird. He looked for the green, every green bird and animal. That is what he offered. Now, friends, why sometimes we don't get our harvest, increase harvest and common harvest? It's because we do not give God the sacrifice he deserves. In Malachi chapter 1, verse number 8, the Bible says this, And when you offer the bride as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Over then to your governor, to Kidero. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Says the Lord. Just take a bride, go to Kidero today. Or a bride, a chicken with one eye. Would he accept it? The Bible says so. Take it to your governor. But then why do we want to take to God a sacrifice that we know it is bride? Cain 
or Cain in Genesis chapter 4 he brought, an, he brought a sacrifice. He built an altar, but brought a sacrifice. And the Bible says, in the course of time, Cain, not that God wanted meat, but Cain didn't bring the sacrifice to God. You know, that was holy. It, he brought it because others were bringing the, they were bringing the offering. They were bringing the sacrifice. And it was not in his heart. You know, Cain was doing it not out of his heart. No wonder it was not accepted. But Abel brings an offering that God accepted. Why? It's because the attitude. The way it was brought. Praise the Lord. And God is saying, if we are lazing altars, even of prayer, we must decide what kind of sacrifice are we taking to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, when Jesus comes to church, this is in Mark chapter 12, verse 41, 42. When he comes to church, Jesus does not sit there. He sits at the treasury. Read Mark chapter, four, chapter 12 verse 41. He sits at the treasury and sees how you are giving your offering. Anakahaka kwa mfuko ya sadaka. Akiangalia vile unaleta sadaka yako. And he sat there and watched as they were, they were coming. Some version of the Bible says the rich throw the money into the bag. They threw. That's some of the version that says so. But the, but, but the poor widow put the money. Amen. Then he said, the rich, they gave out of the abundance. In fact, they gave out of their change in their pocket. But the widow gave everything she had. He was talking about total sacrifice, total surrender unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when the offering bag is, is coming, please. Jesus is watching and he is here. He is sitting at the treasury. He is seeing, uh, what kind of offering are you giving? Uh, uh, <laughs> the sacrifice. The sacrifice. You know, nowadays it doesn't happen. I know Gachuru is here, it doesn't happen. One day, when I used to, when I used to, to count offering, there are days I used to count offering. Nowadays we don't. We have people that uh, count. They do get all kinds of receipts. Nakumat. Task is all kinds of receipts, and we knew why they were there. It's because when the offering came, you went to the pocket, you never thought about what you're giving. So you took whatever was inside the, the church into there. Jesus is washing. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to the altars. We are saying, God is telling us the first altar was built by Noah, but he gave a clean offering. There are so many in the Bible who did uh, build altars. Noah, after getting off the ark, built an altar for God. Abraham, after dividing the land with the Lord, when God told him to look east or west, I like what God told Abraham, and I pray that God can help us. We might pick it maybe as we move on. That God told Abraham, whenever you can see with your eyes, mark your boundaries. Mark your? You can mark your boundaries this year by telling God where you want to go. And the Bible says, Abraham built an altar to the Lord. Isaac, while he was headed to Galal because of famine that was there, he built an altar. Jacob, after God appeared to him, he built an altar. Moses, after the Israelites were attacked by the enemy for the first time after leaving Egypt, he built an altar. Joshua, after crossing the Jordan, he built an altar. Gideon, after receiving the call of God to lead an army, the Midianites, what did he do? He built an altar. Samuel, while judging Israel, he built an altar. A ranger, on the, while on the Mount Carmel, he built an altar. David, after committing the sin of numbering people of Israel, he did build an altar. Manasseh, after humbling before God, turning away from wickedness, while in Babylon, he built an altar. And Peter, after denying Jesus three times, he built an altar. We'll pick it maybe not a little on to explain why. And Jesus at the, at the garden of Gethsemane, he built an altar. He went with James, Peter and John and he was telling Peter, James and John, would you not even wash? Would you not even pray for one hour? He built an altar of prayer. Praise the Lord. Friends, if we have to receive and come on harvest, if we have to receive and come on finances, if we have to have and come on families, if we have to receive and come on health, this year, we must desire, we must decide to build altars for our God. Praise the Lord. I want us to look at three men who build altars. And what we can learn from them 
We will pick the first three that talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The father, and the son, and the grandson. <laughs> Amen. Because father, Abraham, Isaac was the son, and Jacob was the son of Isaac. No. Abraham built an altar. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 9. The Bible says, Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there, and placed the wood in order, and he bowed Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar upon the wood. I, I want us to, let's begin from verse number one. Let, let's, let's walk together from, from verse number one. From verse number one. I'm the one who wrote it, expanded from verse number one, and they have picked it there. Let's, 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 let's go to Genesis 22, from verse number one. The Bible says, sometime later, God tells Abraham, he said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, verse number two. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the legion of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, I will tell you. Verse number three. And the next morning, Abraham got up and started his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him. Verse number four. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the priest in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay with the, here with me. Stay here with the donkey. I'll go and the boy. Uh, while I and the boy go over, we will worship and then we'll come back. Just hold on to that verse number five there. Just hold on there. The Bible says, He took his servants. In fact, he took his two male servants. And as they were moving, he reaches a place and tells them, here, stay here with the donkey while I go with my son. I want to stop there and say this. When you are not a son, if you are not a son, tell your neighbor, if you are not a son, you will stay with the donkeys. That's what the Bible says. Those who are not sons, he, he told them, stay here with who? With a donkey, where I go with a son to offer the sacrifice to the altar. Amen. What I mean is, if you don't know God for sure, be careful. You should not stay with the donkeys. Who is your father? Do you have a father? If you have no father, if you're not a son, you stay with the donkeys. <laughs> and you should not be the donkeys. Amen. Sons offer sacrifices. Sons goes up to the altar. Sons don't stay with the donkeys. They go up. Become a son. If you don't know the Lord, it's my prayer today that you may come to know Jesus, whom to know is eternal. Don't stay with the donkeys. Hello? By the way, I have nothing with the donkeys. And this is the Bible. Is the Bible saying that? Amen? Amen? And then the Bible says, verse number 6. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the, fi the fire and the knife and the two of them went together. Uh, hold on a bit there. Okay, verse number seven. And Abraham, Isaac spoke up and said, let's go back to verse number six. Just on, maybe just give you this when I move on. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. Just an observation I made. He never gave Isaac the fire or the knife. There are things you don't give your son. They'll burn themselves. They'll kill themselves. I'll leave it at that. Verse number seven. Maybe we might expand it alone. Not today. Isaac spoke and said to his father, Abram, father, Ab Abram, father, yes, my son. Abram replied, fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Verse number seven. Abram answered, God himself will provide. For the burnt offering, my son and the two of them went together. Verse number 8. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there, arranged the wood on, on it. He bowed his son Isaac, laid him on the altar on, on top of the wood. Verse number 10. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Allow me to, let, let's just leave it there because of time. But you leave the whole of it. It's very interesting. But we get to where Abraham built an altar. And as he is just about to slay his son, an angel comes and tells him, 
Abraham, Abraham. I have now known that you love me. Amen. I have now known. And what I was speaking from this, as he built the altar, the Lord provided for him. Praise the Lord. In verse number 14, the Bible says, And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. That is Jehovah Jireh. And then it says, As it is to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. As unto this day. I want to mark this. As unto this day. That has to mean, as unto this day in Zimmerman. As unto this day in Zimmerman, the Lord will provide for you. As you raise the altar for God, as it is today in Zimmerman, the Lord will provide for you. Then verse number 17 says, as for blessing, I'll bless you. As for multiplication, I'll multiply you. Praise the Lord. I'm here to declare this morning, as you raise the altar of Jehovah God, he will provide whatever you need. Bible says in Philippians 4.19, And God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Jehovah God is your provider. He will provide for you. Praise the Lord. Can I profess that somebody? Your finances come from Jehovah. Your health comes from Jehovah. You, whatever you need comes from Jehovah. He will provide because he is Jehovah Jireh. He has said unto you this particular day, as we lease the altar of Jehovah, he will provide that which you need. Then he says, as for blessings, I'll bless you. As for multiplication, I'll multiply you. Then he says, then I'll cause you a descendants. Hello? Now, of course, you are descendants to do what? To possess the gates of the enemies. I declare today, you and your children, you possess the gates of your enemy. There is ear of uncommon harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare today that you and your descendants will, will possess the gates of your enemies as you raise the altar of Jehovah. This ear of uncommon harvest in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say amen. amen. It is God who has said that as you raise the altar for me, I will bless you. I will multiply you. I will increase you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord multiply you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord give you, give, give you the, your enemy's gate. May you possess your enemy's gate in the name of Jesus. Abraham built an altar. An altar is a place of obedience. What you can learn from Abraham. Abraham's faith was such that he did not question God, but rather he followed God obediently, regardless of how absurd the call looked appear or appeared. Abraham was called to sacrifice the life of that son he loved. We are also called to sacrifice the life that we love. Amen. In pursuit of a relationship with God, we are not called to sacrifice our sons. Amen. But we are called to sacrifice our own lives in obedience to God. Some of us we may say here, yes, but I have already given my heart to Christ. He is already in, my, in the control of my life. Tell your neighbor, take a hard long look. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Take a hard long look. Are you living that claim you are saying? Are you living the claim you're saying, Christ is in my heart? Fine, you are born again. But are you living in obedience to the Lord? Are you obeying what the Lord is telling us to do? An altar is a place of obedience. God requires that you and I will lay at the altar all that we have, all that we are, all that whom we are, that we lay at the altar in obedience to the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we lift up the altar of prayer, of praise, may we surrender. May we be obedient to the Lord. Altar is a praise of possession. It's a praise of why we get our possession. God tells Abraham in Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 to 18, go and walk through the land in every direction. 
for I'm giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Mamle. There he built another altar to the Lord. It is one thing to have be given a promise. It's another thing to possess your promise. God has given us a promise. This is our year of a common harvest. Friends, it is us to go and possess our promise. Amen. And as we raise the altar of prayer, of praise over this year, God will, will give us the possession. God will give us that which we need. Amen. All we need to do is just like Abraham, we walk. I've got to Abraham, just walk. Mark your boundaries. Tell me what you want me to do for you. And the Bible calls he was given. An altar is a praise of restoration. It is a praise of restoration. The Bible says, when Abraham, if you pick it from Genesis chapter 12, I'm not going to go there. But there was a time, there was a famine in the land of Israel. And Abraham, because of famine, he took off. He couldn't trust God. And so he, he forsook Bethel where he had raised an altar. He forsook the house of God and he went to Egypt. Egypt is a world. And he came to ruin. It's until he returned back to Bethel in Genesis chapter, chapter 13 that God took him back to the track. Abraham is running away from famine. Instead of trusting God at Bethel, house of bread, house of God, he goes to Egypt. And the Bible says he went through a very hard time. My friend, let me speak to you this morning. It doesn't matter the famine that may be in your life. It doesn't matter the hardship that may be in your life. Don't learn away from God. Don't go to Egypt. Amen? Don't go to Egypt. Abraham went to Egypt. And the kind of trouble Abraham went through at, uh, on his journey as he detoured from the Lord, Abraham lied. Amen? That his wife is sister. And he went through a very tough life in Egypt. Until he went back. Praise the Lord. If you pick it from Genesis chapter 33, you see his grandson Jacob. Jacob is running away. Amen. And as Jacob is running away, what I told you, as he is running away, he goes to Bethel, same place. He builds an altar there and tells God, God, if you go with me, if you take me, if you make me to prosper, I'll come back here and give you a tithe. Read the story. Jacob goes, and the Bible says God told him and gave him a promise. And God kept his promise. He prospered Jacob, and for sure he was prospered. And as he prospered, he bought a land. He bought lands. And the Bible records, he built an altar and called El Elohi Israel. What does it mean? He built his own personal altar and called it his name. Hello? Are we together? The moment he called it his own name, he forgot what he had told God. Immediately there was trouble in the house of Jacob. It began by his daughter being raped. His two sons killed all the men. Immediately it happened. He was crying and God told him, go back to Bethel and build an altar for me. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? It doesn't matter your situation. Don't learn away from God. Abraham was learning away from God. But God told him, go back. So Abraham built an altar for God. And he is restored. Are you looking for a solution this morning? The solution is just building an altar for the Lord. Lifting up a praise and a worship to the Lord. And you will be restored. An altar is a praise of forgiveness. It's a praise of forgiveness. Altar represents true worship. It involves forgiveness. If we have to experience and come on harvest, friends, we must raise the altar of forgiveness. This year. 
in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. The Bible says, so if you are giving an offering, your gift at the altar, there you remember that your brother has a grievance against you. What do you do? Leave your gift at the altar and go. First make peace with your brother, then come back and present your gift. Go back. Hello? So if when you are giving the offering today, you remember you have an grievance against your brother, just give the usher to hold on. Tell them, don't put it. The Bible says, it, leave it. Don't go, don't go with it. You, it is not the, the offering to go. It is you too. <laughs> it is you too. So you leave your offering with the archer. Tell the archer, please, hold on. I go and ask forgiveness my brother. And I can come <laughs> and offer it. What, what, what the Bible is telling us is that we need to forgive. Amen. If we have to raise an altar this year and succeed, we must release. We must let go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Time will not allow me to tackle all of them. But I'll meet, let, me, let me look at Isaac. Then we'll leave Jacob for another day. And I'm telling you, it is interesting. It's exciting when you think about it. Isaac builds an altar. In Genesis chapter 26, the story begins by God telling Isaac. I like what the Bible begins. The Bible begins verse number one. Let's begin from verse number one. It being, there was famine like the one of the days of Abraham. Look at it. There was, verse number one, Genesis 26, verse number one. Now there was a famine in the land. Beside the area famine of Abraham's time. It's a kind of a repetition. Abraham was running away from a famine. And then he went to Egypt to king. This Abimelech is a son of the Abimelech during the days of Abraham. Amen. You know, sometimes you wonder why little by this Abimelech is a son to Abraham. Now Isaac remembers his father. When there was famine, my father learned where I am here to declare to you the failures of your father will not follow you in the name of Jesus. The sins of your father will not follow you. In the name of Jesus. The failures of your Lord Father to not follow you. In the name of Jesus. Because Isaac, during a famine, he went. Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of Philistine. Look at verse number two. God remembers and tells him, this is what happened to your father. I don't want you to repeat the same. So the Lord appeared to him and told him, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Abimelech. Don't go to Abimelech. Live here. Where I tell you. And, and the story goes on. The Bible says, God told Isaac, don't go. I will bless you. And he repeats the same blessing of Abraham. As for blessing, I will bless you. As for multiplying, I will multiply you. As for your descendants. It was a reminder to Isaac, don't follow the sin of your father. But the Bible says, God told Isaac to plant in during the famine. Amen. To plant during the famine. And Isaac harvested a hundredfold during the famine. That is what God can do. But in verse number 26, the Bible says, verse 26, 25, Genesis 25, so he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac, servants dug a well. Amen. Isaac dug a well, but he built an altar to the Lord. What, as you think about Isaac, Isaac has, the whole story is, is about the success. He became so successful until Abimelech. I want you to note this. He was supposed to go to Abimelech. Amen? But God told him not to go to Abimelech. As you go further, instead of him going to Abimelech, Abimelech came to him. I'm declaring your enemies will come to you. It is not you to go to your enemies in the name of Jesus. He came back to him and tells him, we have realized you have grown so mightier than us. Let's enter into a covenant. Let's enter into an agreement. And then from that point on, Isaac begins build, digging wells. They are digging wells with the son, with the, with the, with the servants. And every well, uh, 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 well he dug, the physicians will come and 
and, and cover it until when he dug a well and called, they called it Lehoboth. And there the Lord gave him peace, praise the Lord. And as a where he did build an altar for the Lord. Friends, this year, if we have to receive an common harvest, we must build altars for the Lord. To Isaac, it was an altar of dedication. An altar of education. Isaac knew about altars. He was at Mount Moriah, out Moriah, where his father laid him on the altar. And he could see the dedication. And so, to, uh, to Isaac, the altar was a place of dedication. It is my prayer that this year, friends, this year, one of the altars we will raise to the Lord is the altar of dedication to the Lord. That will be so dedicated to the Lord this year that people will wonder why you have changed. Praise the Lord. Tell me, I'm ready for change. Because I'm raising an altar of dedication to the Lord. I'll dedicate myself to the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel like stopping there. We have looked at Jacob. Jacob built an altar. Very interesting. But because of time, I want us to rise up. I want us to pray. We will pick them. What you are going to do, we will let you know. Maybe Wednesdays, we might start a series on Wednesdays and we look at all those altars one by one. Amen? Or maybe two or three per day. But we're going to, we're going to do a, a, an exegesis. That's uh, sorry for using some of these terminologies. That we're going to do an expansion of the altars as we move on. And how, let's all rise up. I, I want us to just raise an altar of worship to the Lord. We, we raise an altar of worship to the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord. I want to ask the worship to help us. Just to worship the Lord. We take a moment. We raise an altar of worship. Remember, we have said the altar is here. And I want you to speak to that altar. Altar is here. Altar fight. You are going through maybe a situation. The, the Calvary altar, because here we are. We are raising an altar. And I'm telling you, as you raise this altar, that which is fighting you, the altar of Jehovah will fight with it today in the name of Jesus. As we raise out our praise, that which is fighting you today, the altar of Jehovah will fight for you in the name of Jesus. You're looking for restoration. The altar of Jehovah will restore that which the enemy has stolen for you. You are looking for a common harvest. The altar of Jehovah will give you a common harvest. You are looking for a common health. As we raise the altar of Jehovah, may it happen to you. May that be your portion this morning in the name of Jesus. I want us to worship the Lord and lift up our hands before the Lord and raise an altar to the Lord. I know the Lord God. He has said, as you build an altar for me, I'll come. Amen. I'll record my name. I'm asking God this morning that you record his name in Zimmerman today in the name of Jesus. And he has said, I'll come and I'll bless you. I'm asking the Lord this morning that you bless somebody here. That somebody look at you and near down the line, people look at you and they'll see the difference. I'm, I'm praying this morning as we raise the orders of Jehovah that, that as for multiplication, the Lord will multiply you in the name of Jesus. And no gates of your enemy shall overcome you as we raise the altar to the Lord this day. Then you're going to make a few prayer points, a few declarations, and I'm telling you it's going to be good as we do so in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before oh, yes, Lord. your throne.
worship you, dear Lord. We worship you, our God. We worship you, King Jesus. We worship you, dear Lord. We lift your name on high, dear Lord. We declare that it's not a God beside you. Rika Kama Mazaya Sarada Bel. Rima Bozi Karara Bozaya. Rapa Kaya Karara Bori Kitiri Bibaya. Roko Bobo Bobo Zaya Karara Bob. Rika Kama Mama Mazaya Terele Bori Maza. Rapa Kaya Terele Bori Maza. Can we give you praise today, dear Lord? Oh, blessed be your name, dear Lord. You are Jehovah God. And you said, as we raise the altar of worship, dear Lord, you hear, dear Father. You will speak, dear Lord. You fight for us, dear Lord. Yes, you restore us, dear Father. Lord, I bless you, dear Lord. I honor you, dear Lord, because you are faithful. There is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just lift up your hand and say, My Father, my God, I thank you for Calvary altar. I thank you for the cross. And today, I pray that the Calvary altar will fight my battle in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, my season of uncommon harvest has come in the name of Jesus. As I build altars of worship to you, Jehovah God, I pray that you fight my enemies in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, may every demonic altar assigned to hinder my uncommon harvest be spread now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every altar fighting my finances fighting my family fighting my business fighting my marriage to be destroyed in the name of Jesus my father my God help me this year to raise an altar of commitment of dedication of praise of prayer in the name of Jesus father in Jesus name I thank you for your people today Lord I pray dear Lord that Jehovah God because your altar here Lord the altar of Jehovah speaks dear father hear the prayer of your people today dear Lord in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you Lord I honor you as you close our eyes and we put our hearts down I want to ask are you here you're not born again you want to give your life to Jesus there is nothing as good. There is nothing as precious. There is nothing as lovely. There is nothing as knowing the Lord Jesus that can satisfy your life. You want to give your life to Jesus. When everybody is closing their eyes, we are praying. If you lift up your hand, I will see it. And I'll pray for you. For you to experience and come on harvest this year and come on finances to you and common blessings and it begins by you giving your life to Jesus and Jesus is waiting for you he is saying I want you to be my son there's a big difference of being a son and being the servant you're here you want to give your life to Jesus just lift up your hand I'll pray for you wherever you are lift up your hand the rest we are praying thank you for that hand just keep it up keep it up my sister Keep it up, my sister. That's what we are praying. Just anybody else is saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm giving another minute. Don't be left behind. This is of uncommon harvest. The Lord desires to bless you. Are you here saying, I want to give my life to Jesus? Can you lift up your hand again, my sister? Saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. You have to overcome the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear, I decree, will not hold you this year. The devil is holding you from uncommon harvest. And I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. So you are there. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just to your hand up. 
when we come and pray for you in the name of Jesus. Are you there? Are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for my sister, dear Lord. Jehovah God, I declare this will be her season, dear Father, of experiencing and common harvest. As dear Father, she comes and desires to know you, I want to pray the Lord God, you make her so uncommon, dear Father, and our God. You will bless her. You will favor her because you are God. I want to bless you and honor you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you and give you praise, dear Lord. Anybody who's coming? Somebody who has just joined this, my sister. Anybody who's coming, you're saying, I want to come. Uh, we'll not be in a hurry for you. If you're coming, just please come. It is you and the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to ask Pastor. Beatrice and Elizabeth Kungu to have our, my sisters over here. Pray for their father. Thank you for these wonderful readers, dear Lord. I bless them, dear Father, and our God today. I declare they are blessed of you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ and God. They walk in your abundance, dear Father. They walk, dear Lord, in your favor, in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we honor you because Jehovah, you are faithful. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory, dear Father. Yes, just lift up your hand and give a clap of praise to the Lord Jesus. Give a shout of glory to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you have had our prayer. Thank you because you have answered our prayer, Lord. We worship you, Lord, and we give you praise. Yes, if you want to bring, if you want to connect to the altar, praise is open for you. May the Lord bless you indeed in Jesus' name. We have been praying for one week, uh, the prayer torch, but in a few minutes, the torch will be taken and will be taken to Kingdom Seekers. We will continue from there. So when you see the lamp is not there, uh, we have only given over, but we continue praying our prayers. Amen. So in the evening today, we'll be at 6. Come, let's raise an altar of prayer here. Amen. Please come at 6. we we'll raise a lot of prayer here. Your life will never be the same again as we do so. One and swear, son. Let's appreciate the Lord for that timely message.